start with a brief introduction through all of our panelists so that you have an idea of who is and who's coming from what area and what's their design background. I'll begin with you, Jaya. Um, so I'm Jaya Deshmukh. I work for Microsoft. I'm based out of I'm based out of London. Um, I have a very long career, 22 years. So perhaps I'm the oldest of the panel. <laughs> uh, I've worked across the U.S. I've worked in Europe, um, India, of course, Singapore, and Dubai. The only places I've not worked in, I've worked in Africa, but not worked in uh, South America. So I've not worked there. So. Um, what I do is uh, I lead innovation for Microsoft Digital, and um, it and I bring with it consumer experience or customer experience design. That that's really the angle or my my skill set in my team. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Sneha Badoria. I work with a firm called Huge Designs. Um, I'm a principal experience designer, um, and I want to start about uh, why I'm a principal experience designer. I'm not a user experience designer because I think uh, the term is very shallow. We should start looking beyond it and that's what transformation of design is about, which is the theme of this event. Um, so every project or everything that we work at is innovation according to me. And uh, that primarily happens because uh, I believe the day we start solving problems or challenges of a business by solving the problems or challenges of users, is when we create great design. And uh, with that thought, I'm gonna pass on the mic to my co-panelists, and I think we'll talk more. Thank you, Sneha. Hi, everyone, I'm Shevya, and I'm a lead designer with Samsung at Delhi, and uh, it's great to be here at UX India. And what I do primarily at Samsung is I design experiences for smart TVs, for uh, mobile phones, for a wide range of products. Uh, Samsung has a wide range of products that I advocate for user-centered design. Uh, act, the, actually, the thing is, I started as an industrial designer, so I learned UX on the job, and that's the sort of knowledge that I try to spread within my organization. It's still very uh, software-centric and product-centric, and a lot of times UX tends to, you know, get put on the back burner, so I try to uh, advocate for those uh, practices within the organization, and I ad try to advocate for the user, basically. And uh, I'm really looking forward to having a fruitful discussion here with all my uh, co-panelists. Thank you. I'm Caitlin. I'm from New York. I am a global, that is my water. I am a global design director with IBM. Uh, I work in business transformation and experience design. Uh, so we try to look at complex business problems and solve them, uh, being empathetic with the user. So that means I lead a lot of workshops, uh, do a lot of uh, client engagements, uh, co-creating with our clients. Um, there's a lot of business dinners, uh, things like that. Um, and working uh, globally means that I go to a lot of different sites, uh, sometimes Japan. I worked in Thailand, uh, so I was also working in Singapore where our clients were. Um, so a lot of global roles, uh, different cultures that I've been able to experience, which has been great. Let me introduce, uh, give, me, give a little more information on what I do. Uh, like I mentioned, we work for, I work for an organization that is uh, helping women step into leadership roles across all sectors. And um, this is a particularly uh, full circle moment for me to sit here because I started my career in NIFT uh, in 96. I graduated from the master's program, worked in the garment industry for a little bit, and then moved to the United States. And um, to sit here, I know way back then, even as a designer, there were very limited choices and very limited role models. And to sit with this diverse group of women um, in 2018 and talk about it, it really is indication of how far we have come in design and how much further we still have to go, though. So uh, it's a really wonderful moment to, stay, uh, to be here and part of this panel. Um, so let's dive into the real stuff now. Um, I will start with Jaya. You are the most seasoned business and design leader here. <laughs> um, I, I prefer to say seasoned. Uh, so let's uh, begin with your perspective on what is the purpose of, um, what, is the, what is the goal uh, that diversity and inclusion plays in the success of a product, of a design team? And from your perspective, have you seen evolve, the design, uh, design industry evolve? Uh, so tell us more about your perspective since you have a big range. It's, it's interesting. So um, uh, when, I, when I started on this journey, they, I used to be the only woman in the room, right? Uh, slowly, there were more women, right? And I can see some of them, right? 
um, and um, that that was great. But what what to answer specifically the if you have enough diversity, not just women, right? Enough diversity, and uh, I really like the the keynote this morning. It's diversity of thought. It's diversity of the way you create. It really really helps. Um, but but having women uh, is interesting because women. Um, communicate a lot and they will fight with you as well you know because they believe passionately about things and um, so you it, it, it's really really uh, wonderful to, to have more women I would I would say that I don't find more women you know women tend to have a voice amongst women but women don't tend to have a voice uh, amongst you know what we call the powerful presence right it could be another woman or it could be another man but they don't they, they don't tend to talk. So um, for me, it is, it, it's about seeing the voice get louder and louder, and, and that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I'll move up to the younger folks here. Um, Shavya, I'm going to ask you the same question, but from a younger lens, and the fact that things are fairly different from where Jaya was. So what do you see in your design teams, or uh, what's your perspective when you, when you find yourself in a different context in terms of diversity? Thank you. So uh, I'd like to start out by saying uh, that uh, one of my earliest role models was my mother. And uh, she got married pretty early on. And there was, you know, there was not a lot of guidance uh, at home. So I saw, uh, what she tells me is that she, uh, I saw her doing a lot of things hands on. There would be unexpected guests who would arrive at home. We'd have, you know, a lot of situations where there'd be no planning required. So I sort of, uh, there's a word in India called jugar, frugal in innovation. So a lot of, I saw her improvise on the spot and come up with solutions on the spot. So uh, that's, that is something that I uh, take forward to my job when I do uh, solutions. We don't, as we know in the in industry, we don't get a lot of time to ideate. We don't get a lot of time to research, so I go back to I go back and think how my how my mother used to do things, and I try to improvise and hack things. Yes, women have I think they have an intrinsic capability to hack solutions on the spot and you know think on their toes. So I think we can really carry that to our jobs, and I see a lot of young women uh, in um, uh, you know in my experience uh, group doing that. And I think uh, that will take us a long way uh, in transitioning to leadership roles. And like we've been discussing, there is a severe under-representation of women at leadership roles. And uh, you know, that's where, uh, that's where change comes from. That's where thought about women and uh, organizational policies uh, sensitive towards women would really steep from. So if we can take that opportunity at this level and uh, you know, go forward, that would really help to bring about on-ground change. Same question for you, Sneha. But um, do tell me what you think in the Indian context. What do you see? So then we can talk to Kaylin and see what, what she experiences. I think when I'm talking about uh, my product teams, when I'm talking about the team I work with, or the teams I work with when I'm working with my clients, and. Uh, the most important thing that I look at at that point um, is diversity of skill set. When we're talking as women in design, I'd like to take a moment here and say, um, let's stop undermining ourselves by saying we are women in design who don't, uh, who feel that we are less uh, seen. And I don't want to say that anymore. What I feel is when tomorrow we look at product teams, when we're looking at designing businesses, designing great experiences, we need to really look at what is the skill set that actually makes a team diverse. While I say this, that I have two very strong opinions about it. One being, um, in a team, you have men and women. Both have certain amount of qualities of uh, feminine side and the masculine side. Each vary, in, uh, each vary in how high or low they are. While this is happening, some men might actually carry more feminine qualities and some women might carry some more masculine qualities. That's why I make the point that today's product teams need diverse skill sets, diverse thought process, and actually a diverse design thinking. That's, what it's, that's what's required. So same question for you, Kaylin, but you'll be probably giving us a perspective which is fairly different. 
I think uh, it might be a bit different, but the truth is we're all humans and, and there's qualities that we all share. Um, so it, where I come from, we have a lot of uh, large meetings and there will generally be a lot of men at the meetings. Um, men like to talk a lot and, and hear themselves, uh, I think. Um, so something that we try to do, uh, we call it Amplify It. Um, so you'll have a woman and, and you'll see her try to interject and, and you'll see her try to say something. Um, something that I can do to help is say, hey, Jaya, you, I think you wanted to say something, speak up. Um, and that's the way that we can start to um, kind of involve each other in the conversation and help to include each other. Um, there's other ways that we can do things um, where if we know that somebody had an idea and they wanted to say it first, I can say, oh, you had a great idea, why don't we hear it? Um, just include each other more. Um, we have other initiatives where we're trying to understand why there aren't women in leadership roles. Um, so we're starting to question that and starting to bring them up and include them more. Um, somebody mentioned earlier, um, not just opening the door for women, but truly championing them. Um, I think that's a really important thing. So I'm just going to add a little bit to this wonderful, um, you know, data, wonderful in information that we've already added. Um, the way we answer this question in terms of diversity and inclusion is uh, twofold. One is uh, the business case for diversity and inclusion. What is the benefit for a company to have diversity? And then the other is the social case of diversity and inclusion. What really benefits? How does the society, how does community as a whole benefit when we have diverse uh, workforce or diverse diversity? So the business case is, again and again, research is continuing to pour in that when women come into the workforce and they are part of the team, the ROIs go up, there is better retention, there is better uh, uh, engagement in the teams, there is also a higher emotional intelligence of the group. So, and these are, these are the challenges that the industry is facing at this point. Um, and women tend to um, collaborate for, with, with multiple, with the, with the community's benefit. Then the other side is the, is the social aspect of it. And we know that women are the hub of any community. When you empower women, in general, the community's well-being goes up. So to disengage and to, dis, to disinclude is not in our benefit. So it's a social case and a business case for having women and diverse uh, you know, voices in the team. Um, so let's move on to uh, some personal experiences. You know, we have, uh, we've come a long way, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I would like to ask, uh, Sneha, to begin with, and uh, tell me what uh, has been your personal challenge in, uh, in the design industry, and how did you solve it? So I have a very interesting one, okay? Um, in the industry right now, when uh, a woman decides to get married, most people worry, I got married to an Air Force boy, I have to travel. So I thought this is going to be the worst thing ever. How do I continue having a job, having a life? What do I really do? I had this conversation with a man. And uh, that man gave me two options. He said, um, do you want to make it? I said, yeah, then make it happen. And uh, I work from home. I figure my life out. I attend meetings. Uh, what I'm trying to make as a point here is, yes, there are challenges in every industry for women. But what we really need is uh, not a room full of women to talk about it, a room full of men to appreciate women, to understand that this is a need, to give us opportunities to make this really happen. We can all talk about a lot of bad experiences, but I want to share a good one too. So now, I've been married for about two years. I work from home. Nobody can question the quality of work I do, the sort of clients I handle, what I really get to. But this has happened because of two reasons. I had the conversation and I decided to make it happen. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask you, since you have a long span, career span, uh, you know, what were, I'm sure there are multiple challenges. You started way back, so it has been. But share with us something that um, the audience can take away and uh, a personal challenge and how really you stepped, you know, how, how you overcome that. Um, so, so I think that's a very interesting question. So what happened was that um, I am ambitious and some of you who know me know I'm very ambitious. Um, earlier I would feel uh, shy to say I'm ambitious. Now I don't say it. I am ambitious. Um, and I'm, I, I strive hard and I work hard to do it. Um, when I would be ambitious, uh, people would say, you're, you're very aggressive, Jaya. Right? And then they would say, I would, I would start talking about you know, how I cook well, which I do. 
and uh, you know how I have kids and I'm a great mother. I stopped doing that. Now the reason I'm saying this here is because I said, why am I, why am I trying to prove that I'm a woman, right? I am a woman, right? I mean, <laughs> does a man have to say I'm a man? No, right? So I'm a woman, I'm really happy about it, but I am ambitious. So um, the, the challenge was, uh, and I, I, there was a company that I went to because I dreamed to be in that company. I was doing very well in the previous company and then I changed my job because that was my dream company. I went in and I was surrounded by white men. Now, I'm not saying white men are bad, they're amazing, okay? And I've uh, middle-aged white men, right? Um, and uh, they would, they would uh, you know, they call me a young lady. Now, that's a compliment, but I'm not young, but, but, but I like being called a lady, but not at the business table. I'm, I'm your, I'm sorry, I'm your colleague, right? And I'm as, I can give it as good as it gets, and you know, you've got to listen to me, and you, you can't do this. So um, I kept quiet. I'm ashamed of it, I kept quiet. And I went home and I cried. And it was my daughter who said, why are you crying? I mean, why are you crying? I mean, you are crying, then I will cry. So I looked back and looked at my daughters and I said, I cannot. I, whether I like it or not, right, I am a role model. So I think each one of us have to understand, whether you like it or not, you are a role model, there's someone looking. So every day, so when I, if I'm sitting here, you're looking at me. If you're not sitting here, you're sitting there, someone's looking at you. So speak up, use your voice, and don't be apologetic, be brave. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, I'll pass the mic. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, recently, a, um, someone came up to me with the idea: design a female mode for a smartphone. The first question I asked him was, "Why did you ask for a female mode? Why not a men's mode?" That's something I really thought about. And I, you know, a smartphone uh, at a certain level is a purely functional device. It's it's helping you carry out certain u u very utilitarian tasks. And uh, I'm trying to figure out where, uh, you know, our gender, our sex would, you know, make a difference in the usage of that product. What would those needs be, which would differentiate how a man uses a phone and how a woman uses the phone? So I was talking to some product managers and. You'll be it's, it's, it's a little surprising to know that uh, a certain level of stereotype is still within the industry. I said, oh, what, do you, what are your ideas about how we go about it? They're like, oh, we'll put those feminine themes, we'll put lots of flowers, and you know, those decorative changeable skins, women really like that, you should do it. <laughs> and uh, we'll do a lot of pink, you know, that always works. So we've come such a long way, but uh, it's um, it's so somewhere it's it's a little uh, amusing to see that how people high up the ladder still you know we still have uh, such uh, we tend to have such conversations with people at decision making roles, and uh, a lot of uh, we were talking about how uh, smartphone the front camera application selfie mode uh, how it's really popular amongst women and especially women in China and women in Southeast Asia, it's very popular here. So um, uh, we were wondering at the company whether you know, we should target our products towards that, if that's a need that, need, uh, that needs to be solved. Also, um, apart from at, at my workplace, I, uh, have fa I found challenges of uh, sometimes being the only woman still in a discussion, in a, in a meeting. And that's very similar to a user experience designer's role. Generally, we are the only people uh, advocating for the user in, you know, when we're working in a development team. They are always, they're always talking about how to make things simpler, you know, oh, this will be easy to implement. The user is not going to notice, come on, let's do it this way, this will be quicker to implement. And you have to uh, uh, repeatedly point out how it's going to make tasks uh, more difficult for the user. And that's, that's where I felt that my role as a woman still, uh, come on, it's still really a man's world, right? And how we're uh, you know, wading through that to make ourselves be heard and to, uh, to be seen, I really relate that to how user experience designer tends to work in the software industry, where it's still, uh, there, there, there are still a lot of uh, men at decision-making roles right now. I'll just go really quickly and say um, I do a lot of uh, a lot of different workshops, and when I walk into the workshops, often there's a lot of men there. Um, I've had times where the men have said, "Oh, when is your manager showing up to run this workshop?" 
Um, I think the best thing that we can do as women is go in and prove our value. We don't have to fight. We don't have to tell them anything. We as women bring a certain presence where uh, men are talking and we can offset that with our feminine qualities. We also have the ability to empathize with them. Um, so just go in, prove your value, prove your worth. Um, don't demand it up front. Um, and then they'll see what we bring to the table. I think we have to wrap up for, for now. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Shaivya Ruchi, Sneha. <laughs>